welcome back. Um, this video is going to present uh, an introduction to the cyclic rate of fire of automatic weapons and the variance of, of, of the rounds. Um, <clears throat> by way of comparison, of course, we'll look at the shots that were fired on October 1st at the Route 91 Harvest Festival Massacre and uh, see what observations and conclusions we can draw between those two types of weapons. Um, basically, I've been doing a lot of sh a shot analysis on Vegas and invariably the question comes up what type of weapon was used. And early on in my research, like you know the first weeks, um, I thought there was a, a belt fed M240 weapon being used and I was naive and so oh, finally after several months of everybody saying oh this weapon that type of weapon whatnot I decided to go and, and do a little research so I accumulated a, a stockpile of videos which I'm still processing processing to this day as I can uh, various uh, weapons being fired they include uh, old machine guns new machine guns belt fed magazine fed you know gas tube springs uh, you name it and they also include bump fire they also include you know the guy with the trigger happy thing the fastest gun in the west or whatever it is and then what I do is I measure all the timings just like I do in all my other videos on muzzle blast although it's a little, e little easier this time because I'm not trying to measure the sonic crack uh, and then I plot them and I plot them in 50 different ways. Um, but the power of all this work that I've been doing comes when you can start comparing them. And so I'm going to start you off with the venue in Vegas and then I'm going to jump over to some automatic weapons. So the first graph I'm going to show you here is a composite graph consisting of volley 10 and there's, uh, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five um, different recordings of it. And before I get any farther, let me go. Um, this is my development environment. Let me go bring up a, a picture of this so that I can, you know, magnify it and all that sort of stuff. It's hard to magnif magnify in the development environment. So I want all pictures for uh, Volley 10 for videos. Or Yeah, that, that'll, that's a good start. Okay. Um, if we were to look at just Volley 10 for one recording first, namely at the Oasis, this is a stem plot with the red line in the middle being the mean and then these are the variations in uh, timing for it and you can see that this cyclic pattern here which is all nice and pretty but uh, that's not what I need to focus on right now there we go okay so here's our plot I have plotted the bus stop the Oasis Apartments, Taxi Raymond Page video and then one cop cam and you can see that they line up pretty well now this is a RPM plot versus shot number so basically what I do is a plot by shot number so I don't have to deal with the variance between them and the variance shows up as a change in RPM and that makes it uh, quite convenient to compare them because all shots that are occur at the same time or excuse me or the same number will show up right at the same spot but by different heights so if we zoom in on this you can see that this shot right there one two three why only three there should have been more anyway they they show up nice so you can compare them the uh, what we can glean by this graph is that the orange and the green one are a little off on some things and the purple ones off on others but by and large uh, they show precisely what Volley 10 does regardless of where you're recording it from uh, 
I look at this <coughs> and I say okay there's some problem right there there's either a mistake so I go down and I say well what's the red and Raymond Page oh well you know Raymond Page is a moving recording so it could be that it could be something else and, and I go look and and then I'll figure it out this volley is one of the worst in terms of variance that is from shot to shot from time to time the variance is huge as things go for example we drop all of, we start at 300 and we go all the way up to sometimes above 900 that's a 600 rpm difference which is way big okay that's probably 10 um, and as you can see this this comparison is a very powerful technique uh, I'm gonna find a a good introduction. Oh, here's another plot with just uh, Oasis and Raymond Page. Uh, let's find the one I'm looking for first. It's here somewhere. Blah 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 blah. Maybe it's oh, it's not just Volley Ten. That's why. There we go. And as you can see, every time I run something, it generates a tremendous number of graphs. And the one I want to find is uh, an automatic weapon, two automatic weapons that have a 240 series in one video. But, uh, I guess we could start here. It should be close by, though. Yeah, here we go. All right. This is a video, and uh, not this video, but another one. I'll, I'll show you all the links to them, where we have a 240 and a 249 in the same video being fired. And you can see that this is a way different than Volley 10 to begin with. Well, first off, it's not RPM. It's, it's uh, the delta between them and point 10 of course is 600 rpm and you can see here that it's very clear that there was one gun fired three rounds and another fired two and they're separated by you know approximately point oh four or 40 milliseconds in uh, in the interval between the shots which would equate to a couple hundred rpm and in fact if we go over here and we look at the one that shows it as RPM. Here's the same information but displayed in RPM. RPM you invert the number one over the one over the interval times 60 so basically you're inverting the graph and magnifying it so you get a little bit bigger um, you magnify the discrepancies. So in this case those nice straight lines become little jagged lines. But as you can see very clearly here that one gun is firing at 625 and one is firing at 780 roughly but they're all nice and consistent and so this might lead somebody to believe that well you know I can separate the 240 from the 249 by cyclic rate of fire alone that's not the case and I'll show you why here in a, in a moment so let's take this is one video with two guns let's take uh, several machine guns and this is uh, yeah, we can do it, either, do it either way. Let's go with RPM on this one. Here we have several different machine guns, each firing a few rounds, and we plot the RPM. Uh, now, as you can see, the RPMs are all over the place. And if you said, if you measured, a, uh, for example, a, a 800 RPM up here, if you if you came up with somebody firing a gun and it's measured out to be 800 pre-RPM, which one was it? This one, or this one, or this one, or any of these others? So it becomes the cyclic rate of the RP measured in RPM or in interval becomes ambiguous. You can't tell from the cyclic rate alone what gun is being fired. 
It's just a simple fact. Now, if you're given a choice, i.e., is it a 240 or a 249? Perhaps. Um, I've only measured, say, 50 different guns, machine guns, and I probably need to do 1,500 to get a big, consistent, uh, very accurate picture of all the variances on machine guns. But I'm not going to go much beyond 100. So in this case, we've got various different weapons ranging from M6. Let's see, these are mostly M16s. Yep. Oh, and here's oh, and there's a Browning automatic <laughs> rifle. It was an older one. Uh, in this case, you'll see that there's some pretty big variances on a couple of these. And I think this one, this one was due to a jam. Uh, this one's, I think, a bar, isn't it? Which just tends to have a, a much uh, slower rate to begin with, etc., etc., etc. If we were to plot these with just the delta, um, it would look, you know, more more uh, consistent here. But if we expand the graph out. Okay, this is the plot for each. Uh, I take five different uh, weapons here and I plot the time between rounds versus the shot count. And you can see that overall these things look pretty flat except for this brown one in there. And so if I take this same graph and I plot it as RPM, there we go. Then uh, we can have we can make a little bit more distinction from them, and immediately you notice notice that this brown thing in the middle doesn't conform to any of those others, and that brown thing in the middle is a uh, AR-15 with a slide fire bump stock. So already we're getting an indication that these slide fire bump stock types things have greater variance between the shots than say this one, which is a a red one, which is a, uh, I don't know which one it was, either 240 or 249, which is essentially flat. The variance on them is so small that it's a flat line. Now with this other blue one here, now not all, now not, not all automatic weapons are that way. And what I've done here is I've included, you know, some of the best and some of the worst for the automatic weapons. And, and compared them to the slide fire. And some might say that the, the worst of the automatic weapons almost looks like bump fire, except that, you know, the bump fire is all over the place from time to time. <clears throat> and so the takeaway here is, if you know the cyclic rate, can you determine what type of weapon it is? Well, for the 240 series, I would say yes, because they're almost always flat. I, and now I don't measure broken ones and things like that, so, you know. But if you have one of these other types up there, say, for example, uh, a uh, red, um, orange one there, which is an M15 firing a 5.56 NATO round. I don't even know what an M15 is. Maybe that's an M16. I'll have to look it up in the video. You know, some of these things I just measure and, and give them a mnemonic and move on. Anyway, back to the thing that if you have one of these up here with higher variance, then it would be difficult on a cyclic rate alone to separate them, even though this one has uh, cl above 900, but at times the brown one, which is the slide fire, goes up that high too. Okay. So this is an example of, uh, with five cases, how there's a problem using just RPMs or cyclic fire rate alone to determine which type of gun. In fact, even including the variance, you still can only get roughly 80-85% accuracy. <clears throat> because there are those corner cases where the gun's out of adjustment or something and you take a 240 series and you, you know, wear it down and all that, then all of a sudden it's got some sloppiness in it and it starts migrating up towards these higher variance uh, rounds. 
and so it becomes still kind of difficult but on average you can say that you know a, a good good work in order 240 series is easily distinguished from slide fire by its the combination of its cyclic rate and the variance because most of them look like this flat lines okay and most of them all the slide fires look well no, you know that's not true not all slide fires uh, do this because there are rounds from Vegas which I'm pretty sure were bump fire that are flat and in fact do we have one here no these are all that so the next thing to do is take some rounds from Vegas and compare them to some of these since we have the worst of the worst and the best of the best and we'll see where and uh, slide fire let's see where Vegas falls in okay Here's, here's a Vegas plot. All right. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four different colors here. My eyes are getting wore out at the end of the day here. I plot uh, a volley 8B from Oa Oasis and volley 10 from Oasis. Volley 10, this big old monster jagged line encompassing everything because it represents the worst of the worst. And volley 8B in green because it represents the most consistent volley in all of the Vegas uh, rounds. So it has the smallest variance and the most stable RPM. Uh, similarly for the 240 series best of the best we use this blue line. Okay so that the, you know the, the well well maintained in working order 240 series are like that and you could immediately tell them apart from the rest. But when you get down to a not so well maintained and or different things you end up with a, a 240 on the orange line up here and while it still has a smaller variance than many things you know it gets pretty big at times and you notice this one this one oh, during the course of firing had a tendency to sneak up a, a hundred RPMs. Okay, um, so basically that's the crux of the matter is that you can't always tell what weapon it is from these two measurements alone. <coughs> but you can't exclude the 240 series unless it's just downright bo broken. And that's basically the, the, you know, the one conclusion that I wanted to, to point out on this whole thing. Uh, let's see what else do I have here on this. Oh, I didn't have bump fire on that one on the one plot, did I? No, need one with the bump fire on it. Yeah, there's one. Okay, it's getting pretty complicated, but it's there. Okay, so what do we? It should be a PSA in here somewhere. Is there a PSA? Yeah, right there. Let's see what color is it. It is brown. Okay, the brown one. There we go, right there. It's kind of hard to tell here, but you see the brown there, which is the bump fire from slide that's a, you know they took it off the internet YouTube did but this when it was there this they fired a few rounds on this is, is what it looks like um, now a couple of these things in here uh, this is just too jumbled to, to make out but you can study it if you want and do I have enough magnification here yeah let's leave it there for a second you can look at it but you can tell there's volley 10. Okay, there's the bump fire. Uh, the green, I'm pretty sure, is an M60s, probably M16s up there. 
Uh, we'll see a blue. Oh, it's kind of hidden down there. What's this green one over there? That's uh, 9A from Raymond Page. You can see the green, how big it is. Um, the pinkish ones are probably, yes, yeah, Volley 7. Oh, yeah, the infamous Volley 7, <laughs> which has 95 round 7 from Oasis. And it's one of the more consistent ones. Okay, well, hmm, can't really think much else to say about that. Now, yeah, this was just an intro, so uh, what I've got is a, a paper that I wrote that includes all the links and references for all this kind of stuff and presents a little bit more formal uh, definition along with, uh, I think it measured 100 different volleys or something like that and plot them all on a map. And we'll cover that another time, another few videos down the line. Got to get back to doing some visualizations before long. So uh, this was it. This was an intro to uh, cyclic, rate, uh, cyclic rate invariance for automatic weapons versus uh, what we what we see in Vegas. And the and the overall takeaways are that uh, you can't say specifically based on cyclic rate alone. And even when you throw in variants, you're still only 85% accurate in terms of predicting whether or not it's a 240 or a bump fire or an automatic weapon of another flavor. Anyway, that's a wrap. We'll see you in the next one.